This is broken. There are packs of Taco Bell sauce sitting here, and it's been a week since we've been to Taco Bell. It's another sleepy Sunday, and today we are going to be discussing quarter-life crises. So let's discuss what a quarter-life crisis is. If you've never heard of a quarter-life crisis, don't worry, because I have never heard of it either until yesterday when a friend told me about it. Um, a midlife crisis is something that a lot of adults go through, and it has not been empirically shown empirically yeah that every adult in the universe has this crisis at some point but that a lot of people in their age bracket of 40 to 60 I'm going there somehow have this crisis something happening that triggers the adult to think I'm not immortal and I can die and I have not accomplished the things in life that I really wanted to accomplish at this point in my life. And the person kind of looks back and says, this is all the stuff that I wanted to be doing, why am I not doing it? So a quarter life crisis is very similar. There's one hair that is right here in my face, but it happens sooner. And a lot of studies that I've read have suggested that because kids these days are so stressed out by different things in life like rent being so much more expensive than it ever has been and income being nowhere near where it should be to support said rent and just jobs being in such scarce supply because all of the older generation is not making any money and they can't retire safely so they are still in the job market where when our parents were in the job market their parents were all like CEOs and retired and on golf courses and doing shit like that where people that are in that age bracket now can't really leave the workforce so they are taking a lot of those jobs that the younger generations would have so there are people who are like 20 years old living at home still in college and don't have any job and have no income and they're expected to move out and do their own thing very soon because they're going to be done with school and if they can't pay rent they can't move out and you know they're just kind of stuck somewhere so i found a web article that kind of discusses some of the traits that happen and i'm going to talk about those highlights depression frustration you feel that life is a lie the only thing that's true is cake you have no motivation you kind of want to just crawl in a hole life is just kind of meaningless it says you fear that you failed. You see problems but never go the extra step because it won't change anything. Like cleaning a room. You're unable to find work that has meaning. Do you ever find yourself just at work and you just don't want to be there? You'd rather be doing something else, but you don't even know what that something else would be. Escapism. This one I totally agree with and I can see it. You just kind of spend a lot of time finding things that distract you from stuff that you would like to be doing or just you find things that don't add to your life they just pull you away from whatever it is you know like you sit and you watch Netflix for eight hours on your day off or you just play with your dick for nine hours until it starts to fall off I think it's important to note that if you are experiencing some kind of crisis and you are in your early 20s, maybe even even in your early, early 30s, and you're not quite to that midlife point yet, that you are not the only one who is experiencing these thoughts and feelings of just like panic, that there are other people who feel the exact same thing and don't know where to take their feelings and don't know how to let it out. It's a crisis for a reason. Only you know how you're feeling, but you are not alone in feeling this way because there are other people in the world who are having just as much of a difficult time as you are because the world has not made it easy for this generation to grow up in. I think the biggest problem is that we grow up with this idea that just a job will be waiting for us as soon as we finish school or college or whatever because that's how our parents experience was I know my parents told me all the time like my dad got a job when he was still in high school when I was starting in the workforce I couldn't even apply for a job until I was 18 I think the rules have changed because my brother-in-law is, is 17 and he started working at a job when he was um, when he just turned 16 and you kind of have this idea that there will be a job waiting for you and there's not 
And so you go, okay, I'm going to go to college and stall for a while while I figure out what I want to do. But then you go to college and you're like, I don't want to do any of this shit. This is all dumb. I'd rather be doing this other thing, but you can't really do that. Nine dollars will get me one meal. Just one. Money doesn't go as far as it did when we were all growing up. And then just living with other people, it's very stressful. It's very, very stressful. And when you find somebody that you want to spend your life with, maybe not everything matches up to the expectations that you thought would be happening because relationships can be so strained by money. And when we don't have money, we take it out on people and we get mad at people. And maybe our spouse or our boyfriend or girlfriend, or significant other, whatever, you have a strained relationship with them because you have no cash and you just are stressed. And so your relationship thusly is strained because you are stressed. Does it make sense? Kind of. Moral of the story is a quarter life crisis is real. It's a real thing. And we can all somehow get through it together. None of these articles told me how to get through it. I think that what happens with a midlife crisis is the person in question changes something to make whatever they're upset about better. And the only thing I can think of is to try to do something in your early life to change things. We're so young and we don't need to be this stressed out. Like, I'm only 25. I should not be stressing out about the things I'm stressing out about. I have a good, thanks to modern medicine, 80 years left of my life. And I shouldn't be this freaked out about stuff. So just make a change where you can and find things that make you happy because that will help you get out of whatever it is. And I think we should stop playing on our phones all the time. I'm trying to make conscious effort to not be on mine so much. And unless I'm like, I've really got nothing to do. Like I'm sitting in, I don't even know. Like, alone. Like, right now. What am I going to do? I probably should be cleaning. See? I think we should find things that are, are less distracting from life and actually start doing things. You know? Like, go to a tea shop and bring a game board with you and invite some friends and play games. Have people over and make dinner and be like, I'm sorry, my apartment is disgusting and I haven't cleaned in like eight months but I need to have human interaction with somebody or I'm going to go nuts. Try to reconnect with people who you've lost connection with. I, I do remember one thing that said try to meet up with, with other humans and talk. So that has been Sleepy Sunday. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys all again next time.